Amen. It's exciting to, to be here on such a special day, but the first scripture I want you to write down and I want to read to you this morning is Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy. I want you to write this down. You don't need to go to this uh, scripture, just write it down. Deuteronomy 17 and 19, because there's a purpose and a point that I'm making this morning. Uh, Deuteronomy 10, I'm sorry, 10 verse 17 through 19, it says this. It says, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. The great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partial, partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Can we turn that off? Can we turn that off right there? Yeah, for you yourselves are foreigners in, uh, in Egypt. And what's that explaining? It's, ex it's explaining the specific uh, requirements of God. He's saying to love foreigners, to, 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 to treat them, to give them food and give them clothing. And so that's a specific, that's words of God, him telling us to do those specific things. And so it's Father's Day. And I'm happy. Everybody happy it's Father's Day? I want you to give the fathers a round of applause this morning. Amen. And so it's Father's Day. It's Father's Day. So obviously, I want to wish all the fathers success. I want to wish them a prosperous day. I want to wish them a prosperous day with their children, success with their children. The problem that I have, though, is what BKM is about. BKM is about helping others. Blessed Kingdom Ministries is about helping others. Uh, if somebody uh, uh, needs something, we want to give it to them. We want to take care of the people who, are, who, are, who don't have as much as we have. And so the problem that I have with this is because of some of the decisions of our government, and I don't typically speak about our government, but I must because they use the word of God. So I have to tell you the truth behind everything uh, because some of, the, some of the decisions of our government, there are some mothers and fathers who have been separated from their children. And I'm real concerned about that. So if you have any prayers that you're sending out to the Lord God Almighty, as a believer, your prayers are powerful. We want you to pray for the, take all the prayers that you have for this church and pray for those mothers and fathers who are not with their children this morning. They have been separated from their children, so it, it wouldn't be right for me to know something is wrong and not say anything about it. That's what we do here. We tell you what's right and we tell you what's wrong, not, you know, not caring what anybody else has to say about it because we're here to teach the word of God to those who want to learn the word of God. And the word of God can be uncomfortable sometimes, but we need you to understand um, that when something is wrong, I'm not going to sit here and tell you everything is okay. And so after the quoting of the scripture that maybe you have heard on TV by a current uh, attorney general, uh, Mrs. Sessions, who is a Sunday school teacher, from what I hear, it would only be right for me to correct when somebody misuses the scripture of God. Amen. Amen? So um, it's my duty as a pastor who's ordained by God. I'm not ordained by you. I'm not ordained by man. I'm ordained by God. And because I'm ordained by God, I have to properly instruct the sheep of God. I'm not going to have to answer to you when I go to heaven. I'm going to have to answer to my Lord and Savior. I'm going to have to answer to the Father. And so it's important that I make sure you understand the correct, the correct scripture. And I have to protect you when the wolves in sheep clothing attempt to lead you astray. It is my duty to tell you the scripture. It's your duty to listen to it and apply it to your lives. Can we get an amen this amen. morning? Amen. So everything that we are instructed to do is always in Christ, as Christ did. We are instructed to forgive, as Christ forgave. Sometimes you don't want to forgive. Has anybody ever experienced that? Where at the moment you say, man, I don't feel like forgiving right now. But then you get uh, accustomed to what the scripture says, and you want to forgive because God forgave you. He forgave you of everything that you've done wrong. So you decide to say, well, you know what? I'm going to forgive because God forgive or forgave. And so... 
You, you, you love in Christ. You honor in Christ. You respect because Christ tells you to respect. He tells you, you know, we work in Christ. When we go to our jobs, we go to our jobs not to perform for the people there, but to perform for our Lord and Savior. When Amen. we sing worship songs, we sing worship songs not to the person, because of the person next to you, but because of the Lord and Savior, God Almighty, the one who was and is and is to come who's right before you looking to see if you're worried about everybody else or worried about him who's in front of you. We, we give because of God. We don't give because, because people, just because people are in need. We give because the Lord says to give. Get to be cheerful when we do it. And so we take care of people because we love God who took care of us. We help because, uh, because of Christ, and we bring up our children as Christ did. Do you see what the children of God did this morning, the skit that they did? Wasn't that awesome to hear from them and hear them uh, you know, using the word of God and saying, my mom and my father would say this. We worship. We get on our knees because of God. We worship not because of anybody else in front of us or around us. We worship because of God. We study the scripture because of Christ. We don't study the scripture and say, oh, it's just nice to know. We study it and say, Jesus Christ says to do this, therefore we're going to do that. And so we do all these things in Christ Jesus. Everything is in Christ Jesus. And so when we talk about the scripture that the, the attorney general quoted, we want to make sure we do this in Christ. Is that okay? Can we say amen? Amen. amen. And so Romans 13 is the scripture that Mr. Sessions uh, misquoted. And, uh, you know, when I say misquote, I mean, you know, when you use something with the wrong context, uh, when you, um, you know, when you use something with the wrong purpose, it had a, a specific purpose, but you use it for another purpose. And so this is what he used. This is what he said. And I want to make sure you understand it. Not because I don't get involved in all the government stuff, but I do get involved when scripture is used. Amen? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's my duty to make sure that y'all understand the, the correction in the scripture. This is what he said. He said, I will cite you, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul, and his clear and wise command in Romans 13. To obey the laws of the government because God has ordained the government for his purposes. That's what he said. And so let me first say, this is how the devil attempts to get all of us. He's not after everybody in the world who don't trust God. He's after you. He doesn't care about what everybody else says about this. He cares about you. He's after what you care about, what you say, because you are children who have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so this is how he gets us. This is how he attempts to get us. He uses parts of the scripture to create a false interpretation. When you have a false interpretation, that's false scripture. And so it's your duty to make sure that you understand the scripture. When somebody uses the scripture, you don't just take it like they said it. If you don't understand it, you go and seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things will be added unto you. And so you Amen. seek that stuff. You have to seek it out. You have to seek if it's true. Uh, see if it's, seek if it's truthful. You have to seek what it means, what it says, what the interpretation was at the moment when it happened. And you have to use it. Then you apply it to your life. You don't just take what any man who seems like a man of God says. Even if I say something that's not correct, you want to seek the scripture out for yourself to correct what I'm saying. And so I want you to write this down. God does not contradict himself. Mm. See, I wanted you to understand, first of all, that the devil does, that's what he attempts to do. He uses parts of scripture to create a false interpretation with us. And those who are not studying, who are not studying the scripture over and over again, reading the scripture of God, understanding the scripture of God, applying it to your life, you can be misled by those scriptures that they use. The, the scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. What, what do people typically say? They typically say money is the root of all evil. And that's not correct. Anything that you put before God is the root to all evil. If you put your children before God, that's a root to evil. If you put your wife before God, that's a root to evil. If you put your girlfriend or boyfriend before God, that's a root to evil. If you put the money that you make from your job before God, that's a root to evil. Anything that you put before God is a root to evil. The reason he used money is because money is what gets our attention. Right. 
When we hear about money, it's like, oh, I can make more money if I work on Sundays. That's a root to eat. You get it? So God does not contradict himself. And in Deuteronomy 10, that we read earlier, he's not going to tell when he was speaking, he was speaking to the Israelites. He's not going to tell them to love foreigners because they were foreigners too. But then tell the believers, you know, when we read up on the Israelites, we read up on who we are as Christians. And he's not going to tell the Israelites to love foreigners and tell believers in the U.S. to hate foreigners and agree with separating them from their children. Never gonna do that. God's not gonna say love, then hate. He's not gonna say I want you to help, but don't help them in this situation. Love is love, and so that's not right for, for our government to say that. It's not right in any way, shape, or form. And as Christians, we are supposed to do what is right. I'm not concerned with all the other things, but doing what is right. I'm not concerned with all the falsehoods and all the things that people do. I'm concerned with doing what is right. And as a believer, you can't be concerned with everything else, but doing what is right and getting the words of God out to all those who want to hear it. And so that's not right. And we as Christians are supposed to do what's right even if it involves not agreeing with the government that we are under. And I'm going to give you scripture behind that because I want you to follow the scripture, not the pastor. Follow the scripture that we talk about. And so part of what Mr. Sessions said was correct. That's the problem with this whole situation because part of what he said was correct. And that's, uh, that's typically how the enemy works. He used parts of scripture to twist you in a different direction. And so part of what he said was correct but the complete perception was wrong. That's the problem, the perception of everything. And so that's, uh, the, the deceiver wants to operate impartial. And that's how he operates. He uses the right scripture with the wrong perception. The right scripture with the wrong perception. When he was uh, talking to Jesus, when Jesus was being tempted, he told Jesus to turn rocks into bread. And Jesus didn't listen to him because Jesus was hungry because Jesus was fasting for 40 days. And he told Jesus, you can turn these rocks into bread. And he was telling him to worship him and all those other things. And Jesus used the scripture against the enemy instead of allowing the enemy to use the scripture against him. Jesus said, it, you know, the, the, the word says it is not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so he used all those scriptures and then he rebuked the enemy instead of listening to the enemy using those scriptures. And so I want to study these script, the scripture that he's talking about in Romans 13 completely and correctly so that you can understand what the apostle Paul was referring to. And so that you can understand what Jesus truly wants us to do in this circumstance. Is that okay? Amen. Now, are you okay with the one with knowing what the Lord wants you to do in this circumstance? Because yeah. some people get confused and say, well, it does say that. No, 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 no. You need to understand what it says completely and then apply it to your lives. Is that okay? Is that fair? Amen. If it's fair, say it's fair. It's fair. Amen. Okay, so Paul, first of all, the apostle Paul <coughs> was writing to the believers who were the heart, uh, who were in the heart of the Roman Empire. Uh, at that time, they were surrounded by what was going on in Rome. And so Christianity was considered a Jewish sect or a Jewish religion that was accepted by Jews uh, in Rome. And so it was approved by Rome. So because it was approved by the Jews, it was also approved by Rome. And so some didn't want to follow the rules of the government. They didn't want to follow the rules of the government, but wanted to live under the protection of the government. They, they didn't want to follow the rules, but they wanted to live under the protection. Now, that's wrong. You can't have both. And so it's like us saying, well, we're Christians. We're not going to live according to what the government says, but we're going to want to stay in America. So I say, I can't stay in America, but won't go to another country. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. amen. You, get, you, you, you know, and so the important of uh, understanding this is how many of you understand that you can't have them both? You can't say one and say the other. You have to have a direction for your lives. And so Jesus, one of the scriptures that Jesus um, spoke on, he asked, uh, the, the believers had asked him, should we pay the taxes to Caesar? 
They were trying, some people were trying to catch him and going in the wrong direction so far. So when he said, no, you don't have to pay the taxes to Caesar because you're a Christian, then they would be, have find reason and find fault to killing him because he's not doing the right thing. And then the others were saying, the believers were, I mean, the others were saying, well, yeah, you should pay the tax to Caesar. And then if you pay the tax to Caesar, they're going to say, well, he's of the world. And they're going to go forward to try to kill him anyways. And so Jesus, when they asked him, should we pay the taxes to Caesar? He said simple stuff. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's. What did he mean by that? He said, you eat his food. He didn't say this, but he, you know, think about it from this way. You're eating the food of Caesar's. You're living on the land of Caesar's. Pay Caesar his taxes. And so it's saying, if you're going to do that, if you're going to be in the land that that person owned and, and, and spend that money, you're going to pay that tax. And so it, it makes sense when he said that. So Romans 13, verses 1 through 5, is what we're going to read this morning. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready. Amen. This is what he said. This is what the scripture says. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The, authority, the authorities that exist are established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on their selves, themselves. Verse 3 is powerful. It says, For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. That is a key scripture. For those who do right, but for those who do wrong. It says, Do you want to be free from the fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because uh, of possible punishment, but also a matter of consciousness. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So we are to, be, uh, if we sum that up, we are to obey the governing authorities. If they say don't speak, we're not supposed to speak. If they say follow this law, we're not, we're supposed to follow that law. If they say pay taxes, we're supposed to pay taxes. Everybody here pays taxes, right? You know, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, you know, everybody does that right? Say amen, everybody. Amen. 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 Those who don't, don't say amen. Just, just, just say no. Okay, no. You're working on it. Work in progress. And so, we obey the governing authorities, and they are supposed to be here for our good and treat us fairly. That's how it's supposed to be, right? They're supposed to treat us fair. They're supposed to take care of us. We are able to buy food. We are able to buy clothes. We are able to have shelter. We are able to work. We are able to do those things because of the governing authorities that, that, that God says he put in place. But there's an important thing that you need to understand here. Even if we are not being treated fairly, it doesn't give believers the right to rebel against the government. Now, hold on, because I want to give you what does. It doesn't give you the right to rebel against the government. We are still to live up to our instructions because our instructions were from God. They weren't from man. So we are still to live up to our instructions, whether they uh, whether they live up to their instructions or not. Meaning, they're supposed to treat us fair. They're supposed to treat us right. If they don't, we're still supposed to respect the government and and not rebel against the government. However, there is only the only time that we are given the right to disobey is when it conflicts with the instructions of God. Everybody understand that? See, we're supposed to be respectful. To, look, I pay my taxes because the scripture says to. I, I, I do the things. Right? I respect the government. I vote and do whatever I do because the scripture says I can do things like that. And so I do stuff like that. However, when it conflicts with the instructions that God gives us to love, to, to respect, to, to show, to, to feed, to give food and shelter and stuff like that, when it conflicts with the instructions that God has given us, that's when I have a problem as a man of God. 
in May, you know, April, May, Sessions announced a zero tolerance policy in which the Justice Department would begin prosecuting everyone who crosses the border. Everyone. Migrants traveling with children would be charged with a crime and then detained. Now, the children wouldn't be charged with a crime. However, they would be held separately. Now, this happened over the last few months. It didn't just, this was something that was that's controlled by our government. And the last, the last number I checked, it was over 1,900 children that are separated from their parents today as we speak. Do, do, do you hear the passion in my voice? There's over 1,900 children. Imagine the children we have in here. Imagine your children being taken away from you. Do, do you, do, some of y'all turn it back to the world. Some of y'all wonder, let's go get them. <laughs> calm down, family. I see y'all. I see Brother Dennis in the back. He's ready to be. He's ready to go out. Let's go. Let's four words for life. <laughs> so, uh, no, the, the, the reality of this is 1,900 children have been removed from their families. 1,900. Look, the, sometimes we don't look at that because it's not your child, but we are children of God. It can just be, it can be us as easily as it is somebody else. So 1,900 children are separated from their parents. You got infants to teenagers who are separated from their parents as we speak. We're here, we're gonna enjoy some food today, enjoy fellowshipping with each other, but there are people who are living in tents and separated from their children and not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. And so it's my duty to tell people about this. From infants to teenagers being taken, some were told, and I kid you not, some were told that they were, be, they were taking the kids to be cleaned up, but the kids were not returned to their parents after that. Can you imagine your kid being told, you know, them telling you, hey, I'm gonna go, go, we're gonna go clean your kids up real quick, and then you're not seeing the kids again? Can y'all can, can imagine what's going on here? And so one child was taken away from his or her mother while they were breastfeeding the child. Do, do you get what I'm saying this morning? There's some seriousness to this. And your prayers make a difference. So we need you to be praying for this situation to be resolved, for everybody to stop playing government and think the, and have some moral respect for these, these children that are out here. And so I have to ask the question, is that anything close to what the Lord instructed, instructed the believers of Israel to do? He asked them to love, to feed and clothe the foreigners who reside with them. That's not right for us not to do that. It's not, look, you know, we act like we, you know, uh, 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 we came here and this was our country and we were the ones who started this country and all this stuff. No, it's, it doesn't work that way. This world was created by the Lord God Almighty. This is his world. We're his children. We respond to his instructions. And he's saying to respect everybody, love everybody. And yet we do these things. And on Father's Day, you got people missing uh, their children, and yet we're here able to fellowship and eat with each other and enjoy our families. So I want to give you some scriptures that, that tell about what we should do as children of God. I told you the only time we are given the right to disobey is when, the conf uh, is when it conflicts with the instructions of God. And I want you to write this down. In the third chapter of the book of Daniel, there are three believers, in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's false god. They refused to worship him. Even if it led to death, they were willing to refuse it. Why? Because they respected God more than they respected the king. And so they refused to, to listen to worshiping King Nebuchadnezzar's false god. And so they were thrown into a burning fire. It was almost like a, bomb, a humongous bonfire. And because uh, 
They trusted in the Lord. They did not die. They did not burn when they were put into that bonfire, into that fire. And so the key to understanding that, and I want you to read that on your own, is when the rules violated the rules given to them by God, they refused to obey what the government was saying at that moment. And so because Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they probably respected the government for everything else. But when it came to their Lord, their Savior, when it came to God Almighty, they weren't willing to bend on that. And we as family should not be willing to bend on what the Lord said. The Lord says to love. The prophet Daniel further in that book follow the rules of the government. He even promoted up to, to, to higher levels in the government. And so until there was a decree that said, uh, that was signed and it basically said that no other God can be called upon other than the king. So now they're saying to worship the king, not God. You can no longer worship God or whoever, whatever God you have. You have to worship the king. The Lord opened, after this, Daniel purposely worshiped God in front of everybody. He didn't care what anybody had to say. Why? Because now you are involving yourself in my relationship with the Lord God Almighty, and I refuse to bend on the Lord God Almighty. How many people in here are, are refusing to bend on what the Lord God Almighty says? Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And so Daniel refused. He purposely worshiped the Lord in the open and was thrown into the lion's den. He was thrown into the lion's den and he used the lions as a pillow because the God was with him. He didn't get eaten up by the lions, tore to pieces. He trusted God. He didn't, he was willing to die for his cause. He didn't care, he didn't care what they said about his worshiping, but he was not going to deny God his worship. And so the, the just of understanding this is when the rules violated the rules given to him by God, he then disobeyed the government and was thrown into the lion's den. But God saved him from the lions. So children of God, we have to understand that the holy word of God does instruct believers to obey the government. So that's what we want you to understand. It does instruct us to obey the government, but not at the jeopardy of disobeying God. So we are to obey the government, but when it comes in between what we are supposed to do as Christian men and women, we disobey the government. The, the, the law of God says to love your neighbor. When the government says hate your neighbor, we will not do that. And so agreeing with the detainment of parents running from rogue countries and separating them from their children is scripturally wrong and morally wrong. That's not what we've been taught. We've been taught to love. We've been taught to love because Jesus loved us. We've been taught to help our neighbors because Jesus helped us. And so it's not right to support the government if the government does wrong. It's right to support the government, but not in a decision that denies Christ. He's our Lord and Savior. He's the, he uses us as his vessel. We are the children of God, and as children of God, we are supposed to respect the words of God and honor God. And so it's a dangerous game that they play in leading some of the kids astray. Because some of those kids who are in those tents, some of those kids who are locked up and can't see their parents may turn away from God because of what they experience. They may go forward and say, man, there is no God. There's no way I can be in 100 degree weather and all this other stuff and away from my parents and coming to this America thing and away from my parents on Father's Day and experiencing all these challenges. There's, gotta be, there's no God. And I want to, uh, the government needs to be careful with what they're doing here. Because this is what the scripture says. I want to give you this scripture right now, Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 6. Matthew 18, 6. We're going to write, I'm going to read 6 through 9. This is what it says. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble. 
it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the, to the world because of, those, uh, because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. Wow. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed, to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Mm. It's a dangerous game we play when we think that because we have control over situations, we can go totally use the word of God and then go against what the word of God truly means. If you're going to stand out there and use the word of God, you got to be careful what you use. It's still the word of God. It's the word of the. It's the holy word of God. And when you misinterpret the word, when you misquote the word, that's powerful stuff. That's dangerous. And when you take children that are children that believe in God and trust the God and pray and, and, and trust in God, and you go, you you do things to them to where they turn their backs because of what you've done, what does it say? If anyone causes these little ones to stumble, those who believe in me, it would be better for them to have a large milestone, millstone hung around their neck and drown in the depths of the sea. God is saying vengeance is his. And when you do things that are not of God and try to use God as your scapegoat, vengeance is his. And so not only would I pray for the children, but I pray for the government too. You want to pray for the government? You want to pray that God does not, uh, does not seek vengeance on them? And you want to pray that God forgives those who do not know what they are saying because it's dangerous. And the last time I checked, my God is all powerful. He's Amen. all known. Yes. He is the Alpha, the Omega, Amen. the beginning, the end, the first, the last. Everything begins and ends with him. He's in full control. He's at all places at all times, knowing everything that's happening. So he heard it just like we heard it. And if we're not careful, that can be destruction. In the Old Testament, People can be destroyed from the third and fourth generations. You mess up generations down the line, your children's children's children can pay for what you did to a man or woman of God. So it's careful. We got to be careful with what we say and what we approve of as children of God. Because God hears that. And we have to obey the government, but only in Christ. What Christ said, what Christ wants for us. And as children of God, we got to trust that. And so I'll end with this by letting you know that the scripture of God is important, but it's important that we understand it correctly. 